morning students today we will learn about the non enzymatic browning reaction in my previous video i have dealt about what is the enzymatic browning reaction so if you want to learn about what is enzymatic browning reaction you can watch my previous video so in this video i will particularly deal about the what is the enzymatic browning reaction so the enzymatic browning reaction is also known as the non oxidative browning reaction and this is being further categorized into two that is the caramelization and maillard reaction but in this video i will particularly deal about what is the caramelization browning reaction so first of all let us learn about its definition what is the definition of caramelization so it is a non enzymatic process we can also tell it as non oxidative process in which the sugar or uh, sugar or carbohydrates undergoes a number of reaction depending upon the temperature and the presence of catalyst and changes into the caramel is known as the caramelization see here the only there is involvement of sugar so sugar play sugar or the carbohydrates it plays the crucial role here so as this reaction uh, as this uh, caramelization process it undergoes a uh, various reactions so let us learn what kind of reaction take place here so there is a reaction leading to the equilibration of the enomeric ring form inversion of sugar condensation reaction leading to the formation of the oligosaccharides and polysaccharides isomerization dehydration fragmentation leading to the formation of the unsaturated polymers with the brown color okay so let us learn this whole thing how this uh, equilibration of enomeric ring take place inversion of sugar take place then condensation then the polymerization and then fragmentation let us learn this with a proper uh, chemical equation or with a proper example so uh, basically what happens uh, so for the uh, for the flavoring uh, purposes we use sucrose in the concentrated syrup form that is caramelized so let us take the example of sucrose and deal this whole process so uh, sucrose it basically caram caramelized at the temperature of 160 degree celsius or in fahrenheit if you take that is 320 fahrenheit so let us see what happens here we all know uh that uh, sucrose so what is uh, basically sucrose composed of sucrose is uh basically uh, formed with the glycosidic linkage uh, um, uh, um, by the two components that is the glucose and the fructose the glucose and the fructose they combine with each other and forms a glycosidic linkage and hence they form a sucrose so when the sucrose is being decomposed means when we provide heat and that to at a temperature of 160 uh, degree celsius it basically decomposes and it decomposes into two components basically it forms a two monomers we can say here and the two monomers are what glucose and fructose okay students glucose and fructose now uh, here i have uh, written alpha d gluco uh, pyranose and uh, alpha d fructose uh, furanose okay so in the previous uh, i have uh, told you that um, this chemical reaction undergoes uh, the certain uh, reaction uh, sorry this process undergoes a certain chemical reaction and that is what uh, it leads to the um, uh, equilibration of the enomeric uh, um, enomeric ring so let us see what does the equilibration means here of enomeric ring means here is see as soon as this uh, this sucrose decomposes into the um uh, uh, glucose as well as fructose we all know that this glucose is basically exist in two form that is in alpha as well as beta form and this alpha and beta form is interconvertible you know this alpha okay let me uh, let me draw this so this glucose basically it exist in two form not only glucose the even the fructose they exist in two form that is the alpha as well as beta form see this is alpha alpha means what alpha and beta glucose uh, means what see when this oh is below the plane it is the alpha gluco pyranose and when this oh is above the plane it is beta d gluco pyranose 
Okay, so this is an interconvertible form. You know, this glucose alpha and beta form they are an interconvertible as well as the fructose also. They they also have a uh, alpha as well as beta. Here I have drawn of alpha. Beta is in the same form. This CH two OH will be in uh, down and uh, below the plane, and this OH will be above the plane. So it will be the beta uh, beta fructo uh, uh, furanose. Okay, so these two forms are interconvertible. Okay, and so it is it is it, it is called as the um, and and so uh, uh, what we call as we we call as the in uh, equilibration form now let us learn what is the anomeric ring you know what is anomeric ring so what does anomeric ring here means the carbon the first carbon of glucose as well as the second carbon of fructose they show the change in the position of oh you know the position of oh when it is below the plane it is in alpha when it is above the plane it is in beta and this is what call as the anomeric carbon so now let us learn what is the inversion of sucrose you know see the sucrose when it was in its original form it is in the dextro rotatory form okay in the dextro rotatory form now what does the dextro rotatory means the dextro rotatory is like sucrose Uh, in its uh, optically active form it uh, it just um, it just turns the plane polarized light to uh, to uh, towards the right and so it is called as dextro rotatory and the levo rotatory is when uh, the optically active compound that is here sucrose when it uh, changes um, you know when it uh, uh, just changes the plane polarized or just rotates the plane polar, uh, polarized light towards left it is called as the levo rotatory so the sucrose when it is in original form it is in the dextro rotatory form okay so when it uh, breaks into decompose into the two monomeric form that is a uh, um, uh, glucose as well as the fructose the glucose it rotates with the uh, angle of 52.5 degree and it is dextro rotatory uh, 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 in the dextro rotatory form whereas the fructose in its levo rotatory form it rotates with a 90 92.4 degree uh, uh, angle with the 90 with the uh, levo rotatory with a 92.4 degree angle so basically what happened the net uh, the net mixture value is minus 40 degree you know minus 40 degree minus means what minus means levo levo rotate ro levo rotate uh, rotatory okay levo rotation so minus 40 is the net value of uh, this two uh, mixtures so this is why the dextro from plus it changes to minus and hence there is a inversion of sucrose here you know so here what happened that uh, after this the formation of the monomeric uh, unit what happened there is a condensation you know there is a condensation and just because of the condensation what does the condensation means there is a removal of water you know the removal of water from these two units and then and hence there is a formation of the polymers so it is called as polymerization so with the with uh, uh, so with the process of polymerization there is a formation of the caramel and this caramel is responsible for what this is responsible for the brown color no basically not brown color basically a color so this caramel it gives a color this caramel is responsible for the coloration so there are three types of caramels like the caramelins caramelines and caramelins you know three types of caramels are formed and then again when these two subunits when these two monomer basically when they uh, when they are decomposed at a very high temperature they forms a certain aromas you know they form a certain aromas with the with the process of fragmentation so uh, they form a compounds like you know ethyl acetate and this ethyl acetate is responsible for the fruity smell and the fruity aroma test whereas the diacetyl which is which is responsible for the you know buttery smell or the buttery test uh, and then uh, this mal uh, uh, this maltol uh, the, and this maltol is responsible for the uh, toast you know for the toasty aroma or the toasty color uh, sorry uh, toasty aroma or the toasty 
टेस्ट एज वेल एज टोस्टी फ्लेवर यू कैन से एज वेल एज दिस फ्यूरॉन फ्यूरान आर फॉर्म एंड दिस फ्यूरान आर रिस्पॉन्सिबल फॉर द नटी फ्लेवर एंड द नटी स्मेल एंड द टेस्ट सो दिस इज ऑल अब स्टूडेंट्स लेट एस समराइज वट इज द कैलेमराइजेशन सॉरी कैरेमलाइजेशन एंड दिस होल प्रोसेस ओके सो वी हैव सीन दैट दिस सुक्रोज इट वेन इट अंडर गोज डीकम्पोजिशन इट फॉर्म अ मोनोमेरिक टू मोनोमेरिक यूनिट दैट इज द ग्लूकोज एज वेल एज द फ्रक्टोज आई हैव टोल्ड यू अबाउट वट डज द इक्विलिबरेशन मीन्स द इंटर कन्वर्टेबल अल्फा एंड द बीटा फॉर्म एंड देन द इन्वर्सन ऑफ सुक्रोज दैट इज फ्रॉम द डेक्सट्रो इट चेंजेस to the levo just because the net value of the rotation is uh, minus 40 so minus means levo so it changes to the levo rotation form so it is the inversion of the sucrose means and then uh, and then i have also told you about what is the enomeric uh, ring means and enomer means that a carbon atom uh, the first carbon a uh, carbon a uh, first carbon atom of glucose as well as second carbon atom of the fructose there is a change in the position of oh when the oh is below the plane it is alpha and when it is above the plane it is in the beta Uh, मतलब बीटा ग्लूकोज यू कैन से बीटा फ्रक्टोज ओके देन आफ्टर दैट देर इज अ कंडेंसेशन एंड पॉलीमराइजेशन व्हाट डज द कंडेंसेशन मींस दैट दीज टू पॉलीमर्स दे अगेन दे अंडर गो कंडेंसेशन मींस देर इज अ रिमूवल ऑफ वाटर एंड दे अगेन दे फॉर्म अ पॉलीमर दे फॉर्म अ चेन ओके एंड दे फॉर्म अ चेन ऑफ वॉट दे एंड दे फॉर्म अ वॉट दे फॉर्म अ कैरेमल देन एंड दिस कैरेमल इज बेसिकली रिस्पॉन्सिबल फॉर द कलर एंड दिस कैरेमल्स आर नथिंग they are uh, you can say it is a mixture of a complex molecular weight you can say a mixture of a complex molecular weight is a caramel and this is responsible for the color so there are three types of caramel forms here that that is the ch c24 s36 o18 that is the caramelian and then the c36 h50 o25 that is caramelline and then the c125 h188 and o18 that is caramelline okay so uh, these caramels are formed and these and these two monomers when the uh, glucose glucose as a fructose they when we provide extra heats to them then uh, they are the they are they are, uh, again they undergo decomposition and uh, and fragmentation and uh, just because of the fragmentation what happens it is a fragmentation here is responsible for the aroma as well as the flavor you know and let us see the, uh, which are the compounds basically formed during a fragmentation and responsible for the aroma as well as the flavor so the compound form here are the acetyl acetate uh, this is the acetyl acetase which gives a fruity flavor or the fruity aroma then the diacetyl um, which is responsible for the buttery flavor and aroma and then and the maltol that is responsible for the toast uh, flavor toasty flavor the aroma and then the nutty that is furan uh, furan it forms a nutty flavor or uh, the aroma so this is all about the caramelization the caramel responsible for the color and the frag uh, just because of the fragmentation there is a fragmentation that is responsible for the aroma and flavor so this is all you have learned about the caramelization Now i have shown some practical uh, examples uh which will make your concept more clear for caramelization the first image you see here is of soya sauce actually polymers are often used as colors in this soya sauce and the second image here is uh you can see bread actually uh, see this is a fresh bread without caramelized and when we apply heat here a temperature here basically it turns or it caramelizes to brown so this is what a caramelization this is a practical example and then again this is uh, actually a sugar which uh, you can see it is an initial stage and then i've e i've heated it to the very uh, low temperature you can see th how the color changes here and finally it changes to a brown color you know first it it, it changes to a uh, pale yellow then amber um, amber and then changes to the brown color as you all can see so i think this example made your concept more clear if you have any doubt you can comment below in the next video we will learn about the millard reaction thank you